Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quadratic equation in the general sense, but without using the quadratic formula. Of course, this applies to specific types of quadratics, which you will probably see very often. We have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a is different from one. So the leading coefficient is different from one. I'm going to show you the general method, which is really, really cool. And then I'm going to demonstrate this with an example. So we'll do an example too. All right. So let's get started. First of all, we could use the quadratic formula, obviously. And there's a formula that gives you the solutions in the general sense, right? But that's not our purpose. We want to use something else, which I'll show you in a little bit. But first, let's do this. Multiply everything by the leading coefficient, which is a, right? Leading coefficient is the coefficient of the highest degree term, which determines the degree of the polynomial, by the way. So we're going to go ahead and multiply everything by a. That's going to give us a squared x squared plus a b x plus c a equals zero. Awesome. Now here's what we're going to do. There is definitely a reason behind this because now a squared x squared is a perfect square and that's perfect. You see that? So we can go ahead and write this as ax quantity squared plus b times ax. We could kind of separate ax, put that in parentheses. Notice that we have it twice plus ac equals zero. Why do I write it as ac? Because in alphabetical order, you could, I guess you could call that OCD. Okay. Now, at this point, we're going to use substitution. And now substitution, as you know, that's something that I use. And by the way, two days ago in my video, I mentioned that I was going to do a problem like this. And hopefully that fulfills that promise. Now, we're going to use substitution because substitution is awesome. And in this case, naturally, right, AX should be called something. And I'm going to call that Y and do not ask why. Okay, you can call it something else if you want. But this gives us Y squared plus BY plus AC. Now, do I know what AC is? I don't. And I don't really care at this point because I'm trying to come up with a general uh, method. Okay. So basically by factoring, by factoring, again, I repeat, not using the quadratic formula, by factoring, I should be able to solve this problem. And you'll see that in the example that I'm showing you in a little bit. But factoring will work on this, hopefully. Uh, so I'm going to be looking for two numbers whose product is AC and whose sum is B that can be found. Once I found those, I'm going to get the Y value. So from here, I'll be getting Y1 and Y2. Those are going to be the solutions. And then since AX is equal to Y, which implies that X is Y over A, and if you apply it to Y1 and Y2, you're basically going to be getting two solutions like this. X1 is going to be Y1 over A, and x2 is going to be y2 over a. So here's the idea. You first replace uh, ax with y, obviously, after multiplying everything by a, whatever a is, and then you put your equation in this form, and then replace ax with something else, and then you get a monic quadratic, which means the leading coefficient is 1, which is good, because then factoring would be easy. Couldn't you use factoring on this one? Yes, but it's usually trial and error or some other method that kind of leads into this. That's called the X method and we can talk about it maybe in another video or maybe I can quickly show you how that works. Okay, depending on how much time we have left and how much patience I have. Okay, so those are the X1 and X2 values and we got them. So the idea is solving for Y and then switching over to the X. Let's go ahead and look at an example that will hopefully clarify what I just talked about. Okay, so my example, just one example. And remember, if you memorize, you'll probably forget. If you learn, you'll remember. Okay, that's something important to realize. Anyways, my equation is 6x squared plus 7x plus 2 equals 0. Notice that this is a non-monic quadratic. Non-monic means the leading coefficient, coefficient of x squared is not 1. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. What was the first step? Do you remember? If you're not, look at your notes. Hopefully you took notes. Multiply everything by A. In this case, we're going to be multiplying everything by 6. Okay, let's go to multiply everything by 6. You see, example is easier than the theory usually because it's practice. And now we're going to go ahead and distribute it. 
we're going to get 36x squared plus 42x plus 12 equals 0. You might be thinking, didn't you make the equation more complicated? Yes and no, because we're about to simplify this. Ready, set, go. Now, remember, this expression is a perfect square, so I can write it as 6x quantity squared. And obviously, I can extract 6x from here. That will be 7 times that plus 12. Awesome. Now here's the awesomest part of this. Now you're going to turn this 6x into y. Let's use the same variable. No big deal. And now we get y squared plus 7y plus 12 equals 0. And guess what? This is easily, easily factorable. If you find it hard, no, don't worry about it. If you're new to po uh, polynomials, especially trinomials like these, don't worry about it because you always have an opportunity to grow and learn. So here's the idea. Here's how this works. You gotta find two numbers uh, whose factor is 12. Let me go ahead and list them for you. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. And if you switch these around, it's not gonna matter because what I'm looking next is uh, the sum. I want the sum to be 7. Obviously, among these pairs, only one of them will satisfy, and the lucky one, the winner, is 3 and 4. You get the idea? Sometimes it's hard to find the answer right away if you're not used to this. But after a while, after listing all these things, you'll hopefully be able to find that number easily. Okay? And why did I not consider negatives? Because my sum is positive, so I don't have to worry about it. You see, those are some tricks that you'll learn along the way. Now we have 3 and 4. You know what that means. It means that I can now write my equation like this. And however you do it. But again, use factoring. I highly encourage you to use factoring, not the formula. Or completing the square is a fine too, but... 7 is odd, so it's going to be a little different. But from here we get y equals negative 3 and y equals negative 4. Remember, x is what we're looking for and 6x is equal to y. So you can basically set these equal to 6x and you'll find the x values from there easily or divide these by 6. You get the idea? That's the shortcut. But don't rely on shortcuts because, again, if you memorize, you'll probably forget. If you learn, you'll remember. And that'll be that'll stay with you uh, longer. Okay, hopefully forever. <laughs> All right, great. So now these can be simplified. Obviously, if you write them in the simplest form, the roots will be negative one half and negative two thirds. Make sense? Great. So suppose they didn't ask you to solve the equation. If they did, you could use this method or the quadratic formula. But what if they just ask you to factor it, right? You could still use this method to factor it. Let me show you real quick. This is really cool. Once you find the factors or uh, the solutions, I mean, let's say x equals negative 1 half. You know what that means? It just means that x plus 1 half is 0, right? If you add 1 half and multiply both sides by 2, you're going to get 2x plus 1 is 0. You know what that means? That means one of the factors is 2x plus 1. And the other one just means that 3x plus 2 is another factor, and you can easily check this. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.